The Zumwalt class destroyers, which are now in service with USA, are the biggest, most innovative, and most alien looking destroyers in the world. Michael Monsor, Lyndon B. Johnson, and us Zumwalt are the three pupils in this class. They're intended to be multi purpose stealth vessels that can intimidate adversaries and support naval firepower while engaging in surface and air combat. The Zumwalt class of ships is more expensive per ship than any non American ship, submarine, or aircraft carrier in the world with a cost of $2.75 billion. And since the development of these ships was so important, nearly all of the country's leading defense contractors Lockheed Martin Raytheon Northrop Grumman General Dynamics and so forth were involved in their construction. Thus, the ships of the Zumwalt class starting a fire on October 1, China's National Day. 25 Chinese fighter jets, bombers, and other airplanes flew in intimidating formations off the southern tip of Taiwan, displaying their military prowess. Numerous incursions persisted throughout the night and the ensuing days, reaching an all-time high on Monday when 56 jets challenged Taiwan's struggling air defenses. As the S warned China that its provocative military activity threatened regional peace and stability, Taiwan's aircraft struggled to keep up. China showed no fear. One Chinese aircraft was radioed by a Taiwanese combat air traffic controller, but the pilot rejected the challenge with a profanity that mentioned the officer's mother. Following more than 70 years of defying China's communist leadership efforts for unification. For the first time, China's military superiority has made the annexation of Taiwan possible, possibly even alluring. Though it has seen its military superiority in Asia gradually decline, the United States wishes to repel any invasion. Taiwan's people are becoming less receptive to unification, while their own military readiness has declined. All three have made an effort to demonstrate their resolve in the hopes of preventing conflict only to face backlash that deepens mistrust and raises the possibility of error. The Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman, Jen, Marke, Milley, called his counterpart in response to those potentially misinterpreted worries. Former member of President Obama's National Security Council, Evan Madero, stated, the Taiwan issue has ceased to be a sort of narrow, boutique issue and has become a central theater, if not the central drama in US. China strategic competition. Roman 11 Jinping, the aspirational leader of China, is currently in charge of what is likely the strongest military the nation has ever had. Some claim that Mr. Roman 11, who has paved the way for a third term of government beginning in 2022, may feel pressured to annex Taiwan in order to seal his reign of terror. Taiwan's independence was a grave lurking threat to national rejuvenation, Mr. Roman 11 stated on Saturday in Beijing. Nobody should underestimate the staunch determination, firm will, and powerful ability of the Chinese people to defend national sovereignty and territorial integrity, he said, emphasizing that China desired peaceful unification. Few think that war is inevitable or approaching, partly because of China's enormous diplomatic and economic fallout. Even if China's financial, political, and military dominance make maintaining Taiwan's security an extremely difficult task, it is still possible that recent aircraft entering the island nation's self-declared air identification zone are only meant to exert political pressure rather than signal the start of a conflict. The US has long hoped that its military might would be sufficient to restrain China's territorial aspirations, but this may not have been the case. In October 2020, the Pentagon conducted a war exercise in which a simulated American blue team engaged in combat with new Chinese weapons over Taiwan. China is acting more confidently these days, partly because many of its officials, including Mr. Roman 11, believe that American power has waned. Such opinions have been strengthened by the United States' shortcomings during the COVID-19 outbreak and accompanying political turmoil. If a conflict were to break out over Taiwan, several advisors and former officers in China contend that the US no longer has the will to send forces. Others argue that if the People's Liberation Army were given the correct circumstances, it may succeed in an effort to postpone or avoid the need for us military action. The Biden administration is working to strengthen Taiwan's defense capabilities and standing abroad. Jia Qinghua, a Peking University international relations professor who counsels the Chinese government, recently said, the three sides have seen their interactions caught in a vicious spiral. The way Beijing, Taipei and Washington are interacting viciously is like a perfect storm building. Two days following the fall of Kabul in August, China conducted military drills specifically intended to demonstrate its might as the Biden administration rushed to rescue thousands of people left behind by the S pullout. While amphibious landing vehicles swept ashore on a Chinese beach, 
Chinese warships fired missiles into the water south of Taiwan. One of the biggest drills to imitate an invasion across the Taiwan Strait was conducted. Unlike in prior training, when it came to its imagined foe, the People's Liberation Army left no room for doubt. The United States and Taiwan were cautioned by one officer on Chinese media not to play with fire on the Taiwan issue and immolate themselves. The question is whether Mr. Roman 11 intends to act. He has promised to spearhead the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation, which will entail giving China sovereignty over Taiwan. According to some, that means at least 10 years from now. Taiwan is unlikely to ever voluntarily accept China's demands due to Mr. Xi's strict policies, especially in light of the fact that he curtailed democratic freedoms in Hong Kong. Since Mao, every leader has promised to unite Taiwan. But Mr. Roman 11 is the first to have a military capable of making forced unification a realistic, although difficult, goal. Taiwan is located 100 miles offshore, so any attack would need to have a significant military edge. Even in the unlikely event that Chinese forces took control of the 24 million person island, the war would severely damage China's diplomatic standing abroad and claim a large number of lives. A fellow at Stanford University's Freeman Spogli Institute for International Studies, Oriana Schuyler Mastro, stated that even moderate voices in Beijing have been calling for tossing out peaceful reunification. I believe that right now, the military option is the best one. China's authorities, having witnessed the United States demonstrate its military might in the Gulf War against Iraq in 1990, started a protracted and politically charged process of reorganizing the People's Liberation Army. The US, 7th Fleet showing up and telling everyone to cool down during a Taiwan Strait crisis is something that Mr. Thomas stated he was certain they would not allow themselves to happen again. China's leaders have been heavily funding the People's Liberation Army ever since. By 2020, military spending amounted to $252 billion, up 76% in just 10 years, according to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. Last year, the US spent $778 billion on the armed forces. Additionally, Mr. Roman 11 reformed the military, pushing commanders to become experts in combined combat and elevating the status of the air and naval forces. The military acted out a rehearsal in which they had to close off the Taiwan Strait to outside forces last year. In 1996, that seemed unimaginable, but it may happen now. An official website for China's Office for Taiwan Affairs compared the exercise to trapping a turtle in a jar. Taiwan prepares to be invaded. Despite the aggressive language coming from the Chinese Communist Party, Taiwan has not been firmly under Beijing's control for well over a century. This is highlighted by the location of the country's presidential offices, which are housed in a vast, stately complex constructed by the Japanese colonial administration in the early 20th century. It occurred to me that the big tower towering above the entrance may be a target in the event of an invasion when I arrived at the headquarters in September for an interview with President Tsai Ing-wen. Tsai is the first female president of Taiwan, having taken office for six years. We got together in a large room with a grandfather clock and flower decorations. A group of aides, largely men, trailed her as she arrived. Tsai was gregarious, professional, and quick. We sat in armchairs across from one other and had minimal conversation. Tsai gave out a cautious certainty. I told her that I was curious about what it was like to deal with an increasing threat, especially in light of Russian President Vladimir Putin's ruthless invasion of Ukraine. Putin is the self-described best friend of Chinese President Roman 11 Jinping on the international scene. Tsai or another potential leader of Taiwan may soon hold the dubious distinction of acting as Putin to Tsai's Volodymyr Zelensky in Ukraine. In a conflict China's missiles could destroy American bases in Asia, China's sophisticated missile capabilities are posing an increasing threat to the US, military sites in the Indo-Pacific region. China has advanced missiles and hypersonic weapons in its arsenal, and its A2 ad strategy aims to dissuade and destroy us military assets. American installations continue to be insufficiently safeguarded, even with initiatives to strengthen base defenses and reallocate soldiers. The criticism from Congress emphasizes the need for improved infrastructure, including aircraft shelters. US bases may be damaged early in a fight without major modifications, endangering America's ability to sustain a strategic presence in the region. The Indo-Pacific region is home to a hub of us military installations. Since at least the end of World War II, these sites have served as the cornerstone of American strategic presence in the area, 
which has dominated Asian geopolitics. Today, the People's Republic of China PRC, which is growing, is challenging that dominance. China's military has built a slew of capabilities designed to both deter and destroy the United States military in the Indo-Pacific, an area Beijing considers to be strategically their backyard. China's anti-Axis area denial A2 ad policy is one such capability. China, possessing one of the most extensive arsenals of missiles, rockets, and even hypersonic weaponry, has combined these systems with advanced air defense systems and sensor nodes to increase their lethality. The Chinese military's A2 ad aim is straightforward. Keep the US military at bay while its armed forces trample over its neighbors. My writings on the A2 ad threat to the US surface fleet, especially its highly regarded aircraft carriers, have been published on multiple occasions. China's danger to American bases. However, America's permanent bases in the area are also seriously threatened. There is really nowhere to hide from China's massive missile barrage that will be launched at the American territory if a war breaks out between Beijing and Washington. This is especially true in places like Guam, where the United States has moved most of its military assets in the region that will be essential for deterring China from attacking Taiwan or any of its other neighbors. China may currently launch missiles at any US site located in the Indo-Pacific region. It's so terrible that US military chiefs are receiving criticism from Congress for their slow adaptation to the contentious environment. For instance, in May of this year, Senator Marco Rubio and Representative John Mullinar wrote to Secretary of the Air Force Frank Kendall and Secretary of the Navy Carlos del Toro of the Biden administration, chastising them for not improving US bases in the Indo-Pacific region to better withstand China's formidable missile threat. The Biden administration's US military commanders have refrained from installing airplane shelters at US military stations around the region, which is a significant defensive precaution. It's remarkable since a large number of the bases China targets with its missiles are essentially air bases that are positioned forward. In the event that Chinese missiles damage the runways or target the aircraft while it is parked on the tarmac, the bases would be useless weapons in a war with China. China has fortified its facilities with 400 aircraft shelters, whereas the United States has grudgingly constructed a pitiful 22 aircraft shelters, perhaps in anticipation of an American counterattack with their own long-range missiles. The disputed letter further chastised the military for upholding what it mockingly called cumbersome World War Roman II era procedures that serve only to postpone projects and drive up expenses. As I have shown with the Navy's cost overruns with the Constellation class guided missile frigate program, this is a trend that is repeated across the force. It will cause us to lose a significant war that will happen much sooner than most people think since it is systemic. To be fair to the Biden administration, they have made an effort to modernize the American base's infrastructure in the area. First off, the Biden administration has expanded military access to bases in allied nations across the Indo-Pacific and deployed advanced weapon systems, 